Hello to everyone on YouTube, I am Jordan Mustang 87 and welcome to what is now the start of another all new Let's Play and where for the first time ever I am actually recording this on my PlayStation 2 where after managing to faff about with a few things regarding my hardware and also doing some research to make sure this was well and truly possible I'm now officially recording this on my PlayStation 2 for the first time ever, and I am also hopeful in saying that this will be far from the last. Anyway, so this is the game we are now doing, Gran Turismo 4 Prologue. So as a backstory towards what eventually led to the release of this game, well initially Polyphony planned on releasing Gran Turismo 4 by December of 2003 to early 2004 in terms of the worldwide release of GT4, but however, this was delayed again. As a matter of fact, the Gran Turismo 4 release date was delayed a few times, but what we eventually got in the end was very much worth it, in my opinion. But altogether, so as a consolation, as well as an apology from Polyphony for delaying Gran Turismo 4, they gave us Gran Turismo 4 Prologue. A game itself that was basically released as an apology to say sorry for the GT4 delay. But anyway, yeah. So this game it first came out in Japan in December of 2003, and believe it or not, this game would also get a Korean release date, which came out in January of the following year, 2004, and then we here in Europe would also get this game a few months later by May of 2004. Sadly, however, this game was never released in the US. It was only released in uh, the Japanese and Korean markets, as well as also being released in the European market as well. But luckily, I did happen to find this game on the shelf of a used game store, and that's pretty much how I got it. So yeah. So there's quite a few things that this game has, and I will now go through my options whilst I am ranting about this game and giving you everything you need to know without having to do any racing or shit like that. Anyway, so screen aspect ratio, yeah that's good. Don't need to adjust it horizontally or vertically, it's fine the way it is. And I'm gonna turn background music off. I don't think it's copyrighted, but I obviously need to be sure of this, and I'm also going to turn traction control off because I don't really need it, and going to put the opponent car difficulty up to pro because, well, rubber banding in this game is not very strong from what I have established with most cars in this game. Most of the cars you drive, that is, because, well, rubber banding, it's not really much of a thing in this game. But to be fair, this game was developed in a short time, so I will give him defense for that, if you know what I mean. Anyway, autosave, I've got that turned off, I do have my reasons for having that turned off. And don't need the vibration on, I also use manual transmission from here on out because obviously my Porsche Challenge playthrough didn't really allow me to use manual transmission. It was a bit complicated, to say the least. But anyway, so those are my setting adjustments, and now let's actually go through the features of the game. And also in the European release of this game, we also get a bonus disc that does show the making of this game 
and I think of Gran Turismo 4 as well if I'm not mistaken. So these are the modes we get from the main menu. We get score mode, arcade mode, save game, load game, options, replay theatre and the credits. I'm also pretty sure we get an ending movie added to this as well once we're done with all the lessons. And we get a total of four different sections to start with, as you can see here. So the four sections we get are the green section, the orange section, the blue section, and the red section. However, once we are done with the red section, we will get something else as an additional bonus giving us more lessons to do afterwards. And that's all I'm going to reveal once we're done with the blue section. Obviously we haven't done anything yet, so as you might have guessed, there's not really much to take notice of. So you know, there is that. And also for arcade mode, there are also a few settings that you will no doubt be familiar with. So we can start, we've also got options, and we can exit. Options, from what I know, they're pretty much the same as what they are from the main menu screen. And yes, they are. And don't really need to worry about inserting a wheel, because obviously I'm using a controller. And because, well, it might take me a bit too long to give myself practice with the steering wheel right now. I'm not really in the mood for trying a steering wheel yet. I will do it at some point, but just not too soon. And if I just press start, we get a total of five tracks in the game, as those tracks are Sakuba Circuit, New York, Grand Canyon, Fuji Speedway, and the Italian Street Course. Or, as it says up there in the top left, Cita di Aria. I hope I said that right. Anyway, so those are the five courses we get, and we can only race on three of them, as you may have found out from my uh, GT4 Prologue arcade races, with me clearly stating that we can only race at Tsukuba, New York, and Fuji. The other two tracks, well... You're basically just ripping around each of those tracks and more or less going as fast as you can go. Basically. But anyway. So these are the cars we got to start with. Without needing to do any lessons in the school mode. As of which the school mode basically is the mainstay progress of the game. So we get the Nissan 240ZG as our first choice, and we also get a couple of other choices here, like for example the Honda Odyssey, the Honda Integra, the Subaru Legacy, the Toyota MR2 SW20, there is also the Skyline GTR, along with an Evo 8, and also a Subaru, and we also get rally cars as well, like for example this Mitsubishi Evo 4, and also this infamous Toyota Celica GT4 from the 95 season that basically got excluded for having a turbocharger fitted. So you know. But either way, this car no doubt became an icon and it would also feature in Gran Turismo 4 itself, as you might have guessed. So, the choices we get are from the Nissan 240ZG all the way up to the Mazda Kusabi, which is basically the last of the cars we can select without doing any of the lessons. And of course, the lessons are important if you want to get all cars available. And that includes the prize cars as well for achieving all gold. So hopefully that more or less gives you an overview of what arcade mode is. 
and of course there were a total of I think 50 cars involved in this game altogether and that's if you include all the lessons at least that's what I think there is there's probably more than that but there is at least 50 cars in this game that would feature in Gran Turismo 4 itself so I think I'm just gonna go over to the stat screen and that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave you so hopefully that more or less gives you everything you need to know about Gran Turismo 4 Prologue basically all of the progress is in the school mode and I will be getting on with this next so that'll do it for the introduction of Gran Turismo 4 Prologue and next time we will actually be starting the game and so with that see you in the school mode